Hello, it's the weekend, it's the best of, it's the tube, it's our top stories all over again. Let's do it. With me are the tube's team, Yaron Tenbrink, Amit Kling. How was your week, boys? I meet you as the first boy. Just plain horror. Just plain horror. Why? Do you ever feel like a wonderful childhood has really made it difficult for you to transition into a horrible adulthood? No. Well, sorry then. That was your week. Ah, you no. know, just a passing thought. Yeah, great, great. Excellent, excellent. Especially if I have to compare myself to this guy. Yeah. Oh. N didn't wake up screaming? Nope. Nope. Okay, let's start our show. This was a big week on the battlefront between tech corporations and governments. Uh, shut down brewing for decades and the stuff science fiction dysotopias are made of. In England, government officials accused Microsoft with threatening members of parliament with closing down R&D centers in their constituencies if they failed to vote on IT reform. In Russia, to the contrary, Putin threatened blocking Facebook, Google, and Twitter should they refuse to give in data on leading bloggers. And the fun is just beginning. Yaron, so when government and tech go fight each other, who wins? That's a good question. Uh, I believe that in most cases we don't know about tech wins. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, just, just now there's this whole story uh, about Google getting some, finally getting some heat from the White House for some shenanigans or other that they, they're doing, but basically Google has a free pass. Mm -hmm. Google was supposed to stand, um, to stand through uh, antitrust lawsuits mm -hmm. uh, at least a couple of times and the uh, government, the American government just gave it a green card and, you know, it just goes on and on. And, and uh, in, in reality, I think, we hear about the cases where uh, the government does manage to regulate tech giants, mm -hmm. but we don't hear about the cases where tech giants actually, you know, bend the government's arm. Uh, I think the government is more and more dependent on those tech giants. The economy is dependent on them. They've got a lot of power, and that power is just growing. Yeah. And then what? What? The one thing that. Uh is still state has some sort of not superiority but st some sort of uh, sort of comes first is that if a tech company finds itself at in, running into problems with one government while it's coming from another country it's still like th these line of conflicts still kind of pretty much align themselves according to international relations because look like, in this case I don't really see Google caving into Russia be being an American company and the whole Russia-West tensions, mm -hmm. it will just be terrible for their Western market, which is much bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's unlikely that in this case, uh, Google will cede anything to Russia. Yeah, but Russia, you know, Russia is a good uh, example of uh, somewhere that the government does have a lot of power. Uh, it can just basically make up its own rules and enforce them. Mm -hmm. But for that, you need to have something that's less than a democracy. You need to have someone like uh, Putin here uh, uh, to kind of uh, uh, call the shots. Mm -hmm. And uh, even then, I think it's more like, you know, empty threats. Yeah, because in the case of Putin versus Ameri an American company, he doesn't have really much leverage against them. No, it's I not mean, the, it's they a they big want, market. They want the Russian not, business, of they course. They do, but it's not as much as they'd want to keep the American business. But still, is this a hint for the future? I mean, are we going to see more and more friction between state and tech, Amit? Probably so, and even just simply at some point, just more and more tech dominance over state, more and more state lo tech do lobbying and dominance in, f in, in, in plain sight and clairvoyantly. Well, well, meaning what, though? Meaning, you know, tech dictates to the government what's going to be. Uh, it can be about, like, going to, maybe going to war. It can be about many things. It can be about infrastructure. It can be uh, in any place where tech has something to benefit it will try to uh, uh, make the government bow down. And I think that eventually, indeed, at a growing pace, mm -hmm. we'll see uh, tech taking charge. I mean, let's say there is two competing tech giants in two rival countries. One company that would want to you know, destroy its competitor can actually try to, in some ways, pressure its government and try to make the relations collapse into a state of war, hoping to destroy its rival along with the country. That's, that's a possible scenario. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't sound like a lovely one, nope. I have to say. No, nope. that's not going to be fun. That's no. life. Less than fun. OK, what would your phone be if it didn't receive uh, text messages, emails, run apps, or browse the web? The answer for younger audiences or recent tier amnesiacs is it would be just a good old phone. Light phone, a credit card sized phone that does, well, exactly that and prides itself on a battery that lasts, as a result, 20 whole days. Well, let's take a look before we dive into the paradoxical world of anti tech gadgets. <laughs> The light phone. Your phone away from phone. Designed to be used as little as possible. It's the size of a credit card and it only makes phone calls. Works with your existing phone, allowing you to comfortably disconnect. You can go out with the light phone free of distractions and you'll never miss a call from mom. We look at everything everyone else is building. It's fighting for more of our attention and more of our time. The light phone is thoughtfully simple, designed to be used as little as possible. We are using the same technology we used 10 years ago to build phone. But for the light phone, we strip away everything but the phone itself. So, I mean, the phone is not only a gadget, it's a statement, isn't it? It is. I mean, this is. Uh, we've seen ca this kind of stuff coming before, but usually more in the sh form of you know arts projects, like designer tech arts projects. Mm -hmm. And this is actually pretty much as close to an actual gadget as those are getting. They're they're kind of blurring the line. Um, I don't know how much actual usability it's going to see because what they're retaining is the most horrible quality of a phone. Why? Which is to have pretty. a phone call. Oh, okay, I, I hate <laughs> talking on the phone. Yeah, but you know what? Please stop calling me, Jason. Stop. Uh, I, I don't even stop, have your number. Stop phoning. Stop. Um, stop. Zing, zing. Yeah. Uh, Yaron, you might actually want to have one of these. You know, I the mean, weekend starts. It's, it's pretty cool if it's not expensive. Like, and, if and it were just this, but just texts, I would much prefer it, you know? Maybe. Just but text. that's like kind of a beeper. Yes, thing. I would have a beeper. You, you would like to have a, a beeper. A credit card size no, beeper? But I think, I you know, there's that. this wave now, a very trendy wave, of course, and mm -hmm. only very rich people actually allow themselves to become part of the trend, to disengage from tech, to get disconnected, to, to not have a phone is like a real... Why is it a rich thing? It's easier to do, to disengage when you're a boss, not when you're an employee. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. uh, if, if you're a working person and you're in a company, then your phone is your, you know, basically your electric bracelet that ties you to work, mm -hmm. emails. You're expected to be reachable also by friends, by your whole social environment expects you to be available in some way or another to chat or text or whatever. But like very rich people can just say, I don't have a phone at all, you know? Uh, but this, 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 is, this is interesting because it actually comes to say uh, all this tech, we don't really want it. And the funny thing is, of course, that it's gadgets. So you're buying a gadget to say you don't want tech gadgets in your life. Mm -hmm. But it's not the first time. I mean, we, we've uh, we've seen quite a few of these on the show here. Uh, we've seen like, uh, you know, anti, uh, anti smartphone sh cam uh, uh, vests that reflect the light and, you know, ruin paparazzi photos. Like, there, there are many different, uh, uh, it's quite a growing market, actually, I think. Well, the man I saw in the video that it's not instead of your phone, you can have your phone and have this, so when you want to... you can keep the phone. The, the idea is just you leave it at home and you go outside only with this. Yeah, but it could, could have been nice. You know, I celebrated the uh, birthday of a friend on Saturday, and I said if the phone was not with me, it would have been nicer, but I can't be completely unreachable. So I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, it, it is kind of cool, and I think uh, we, we're going to see a lot of more of these kind of gadgets that try to, to lessen the noise. Now just make it cheap, and you've got me. Yeah. Now, this week, Google rolled out its Spotlight uh, Stories, a series of short films, mostly animated, but including one live short directed by Justin Lin of Fast and Furious fame, released for Android smartphones and presented in 360 degrees, which viewers can, of course, fully navigate. Before we ask whether the future of stories is in 360 degrees, let's look behind the scenes of one of the animated shorts called Duet. 
are an artist. It's going to take both sides to really move this art form forward to what it can become. With a traditional story, the director holds the camera, so you know he'll get it right. But in our medium, we never knew. You see somebody watching duet and tearing up. That's a moment that you don't forget. Do it. So um, before we talk about, about uh, the technology and everything, how are you supposed to use it? It depends. Like on YouTube now, they have 360 degrees videos, and you can just, with your uh, mouse, you can just move around pretty, the video. Pretty much like you move your head in a video game. Pretty much the same. Yeah, but, but like on, on iPads, you could actually move the iPad, yeah. and it moves with it. But I'm, I mean, she, in the video, she did like this. Yeah, because she... her, her tablet has some kind of motion sensor. Okay. Which which is which works with the uh, video and uh, but you know technology aside, it's a really exciting way to tell stories and this uh, Google app, which looks really brilliant, uh, wh where they're gonna start pushing uh, such kind of through the app, they're gonna start pushing uh, 360 degrees movies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 it opens up so many possibilities for storytelling. I mean, uh, the fact that there is not a single camera and not a single point of view, but you could actually check the scene or stand inside it, it opens up really a new realm of possibilities. Yeah. It's um, so weird, but before I, I, I feel like I need to try it to actually get it, um, so I'll try it. Try Am it. I able yeah, to try. see it already? Hmm? Am I able to see it on my phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just the, the app exists already. Spot, I can uh, download it and then do this whole thing yeah. Yeah. with myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah what do you but, want to say? Uh, just it, it comes with certain limitations. I mean, there are, there's going to be points in a narrative, whatever it is, that you want the viewer to acknowledge in any case because they're necessary for progress. So it's going to be uh, maybe become more and more common the, the viewing method, but I don't think it's really going to change this, the whole not, not narrative structure. It's going to probably be pretty much like the limited uh, point of view that you can sometimes move around in a video game, mm -hmm. but you still eventually are forced to watch the cutscenes and see exactly what happens. Yeah, well, Vice Media, for example, are already using the same technology for uh, documentaries. Yeah. And, and for news coverage, this is really mind-blowing because you're right inside the event and you can watch it from various angles, and yeah. it's really very impressive. Uh, I, I, you know, I think once this becomes also interactive, Mm -hmm. and you can add the gaming aspect, aspect to it, then we have like a real new field of storytelling. Which is very exciting. Before we finish, we want to talk about the first law of viral videos. The first law is that when you get the entire cast of Game of Thrones to sing on your video, it will go super viral. Look, it even worked for NBC, who paired the likes of Peter Dinklage and Keith Harrington with, well, play for some reason. Never mind that, Broadway, it's coming, let's watch. Still going strong. He's still going strong. Yeah, yeah. He's still going strong. Remember Ned Stark, he was a lot of fun, so but fun. he didn't make it past. Season one. Oh, no. Robert Baratheon was part of that crew, but he never made it to season two. The King of the North was cool, you said. So cool. Another favorite that ended up dead. He's you dead. thought that He's Joffrey had to survive. He ain't in the credits for season five. Season Broadway is coming. It's an amazingly specific law, isn't it? Yeah, yeah very, very specific. specific law. Uh, you like the video? Uh, the, the, the long version is very, very cool. It's 12 minutes long. It's also on YouTube. Uh, of course, we don't have time to show it, but it's 
very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole idea is this kind of mockumentary uh, behind the scenes of making uh, Game of Thrones musical. Mm -hmm. Coldplay are making the music. And it's, it's, it's very it similar. Also, it also gets cancelled in the end, so that's a, a nice... Uh, yeah. I'm nice assuming you need nice to touch. watch and like the show to what? enjoy the video. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't like How? it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Amit. Thank, thank you. you very much, Sharon. Thank you, Jason. Thank you very much, audience at home. Please enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll be back Monday with a brand new show of the Tube. Log on to our website. It's i24news.tv. And always remember, remain humble, but still let these bitches know. Goodbye.